Okay, so now that we've got some stock on double angles and compound angles, I just want to write them down over here so that we can remember them. Okay, so let's let's just grab them and put them uh, put them on there. Compound angles. So just some of the compound angles that you already know. Let's you start off with sine sine a plus b. That is equal to sine cos cos sine. Okay, and remember it's a b a b and for sine the the sine here plus indicates that we need a plus on this side as well. Now if that were to be sine a minus b then we're going to say well this has to be minus and this over here should be uh, should be minus as well. Okay, because we maintain the signs when we talk about sine. But if I were to say uh, let's say I had cos again let's work with a plus b then it's going to be cos cos sine sine this is a this is b that's a that's b and that plus changes to a minus over here now if I were to take that this becomes negative a minus b then I use plus on this side. So just remember that for, for sine, we keep the sine and for um, cos, we flip it. Okay. The double angle identities are of course identities such as sine of 2a that is equal to 2 sine a multiplied by cos a and then cos 2a is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1 or cos squared a minus sine squared a or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Okay, so now that we've got that all on our summary sheet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a new page and I'm going to say, well, let's, let's move on with the question uh, that we have over here. Now there's two things that I'm going to introduce to you here. Remember I said never work with an angle greater than 360 degrees. Uh, if something is outside the realm of 360 degrees, we bring it back and we bring it inside 360 degrees. And once it's inside 360 degrees, then we need to get it less than 90 degrees. That's the ultimate aim, getting something less than 90. Okay. Now a little bit earlier I showed you co-ratios, but right now I just want to quickly give you some background some more information on co-ratios as well. So let's say I set up a coordinate system like that um, and you also already know your ASTC diagram. Remember ASTC and remember co-ratio says this is 90 minus theta. Now be very very careful here. I'm not talking about um, reduction formulae rather I'm talking about the co-ratio formulae, right? 270 degrees plus theta. There we go. Remember this is 0, that's 90, this is 180, and this is 270. So, co-ratios. The co-ratio of sine is cos, right? These are the co-ratios that I'm talking about, sine and cos. So, if, for example, I have sine of 90 minus theta, this is an identity, and it says that's actually equal to cos of theta. Now, there's two things you need to do when you work with co-ratios. Number one is check the sign of original function. That's the first thing you want to do. Check the sign of the original function. T I O O. We're not going to get that in. O N. There we go. And then number two is you, you then change to the co ratio. Change to co ratio. So in order to do that, I need to use these two, these two um, diagrams from our summary sheet or these two distributions on the Cartesian plane. So sine 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. So what does this mean? Let's, let's use an example. If I have sine 90 minus theta, that's actually just cos theta. Um, what about cos 90 minus theta? Well, that's in the first quadrant. Now you know according to the ASTC or the cos diagram that all ratios are positive there. So the co-ratio of cos I change to sine and I'm going to get the following. That's just going to become sine of theta. I just take this thing and I put that over there. 
that goes there. So similarly, what about having cos of 90 plus theta? And here's where it gets interesting. Cos 90 plus theta, firstly, it's a code ratio, and code ratios, you only use it if you see it like it is there. That 90 plus theta is actually in the second quadrant, and so I'm working here. And cos in the second quadrant is negative, so I take the sign of the original function. The original is cos, but now I change the cos into sine, and then I just take the theta and I put that on, on the side over here. Okay, uh, let's 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 get another one. How about you give me one? Okay, very good. Sine two seventy minus theta. Right. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that one. Well, check the sign of the original. I'm working with sine. I'm working in this quadrant now. Sine in the third quadrant is negative, so I put the negative there. And then I change that sine into its co-ratio, which is cos. And this theta then goes there, like so. Okay, that's fairly simple. Okay, so you check the sine of the original function, and then you change the function to its co-ratio. So let's see some with numerical examples. Um, numerical examples. What are, what are a few numerical examples? Well, what if I have sine of 90 minus 30? Right? That's actually just what's 90 minus 30 is in the first quadrant because it's 90 minus. This is considered my theta. Okay? From the previous example, that's my theta over there. And so now I can say, well, that's going to be positive because sine is positive. And then I use the code ratio and then I put the 30 over there. Now this is something that you also know it adds up to 90. Because if I say sine of 90 minus 30, that's 60 degrees, then that is equivalent to cos of 30 degrees. Okay, let's try one more. Let's say cos of 270 degrees plus theta, I could call that theta 30, 40, whatever I want it to be. And then I can say, well, cos in the fourth quadrant is positive, so it stays that. And then I just change it to its co-ratio, which will be sine of theta. And with a numerical value, that could easily have been cos of 270 plus uh, 30 degrees, such as this. Okay, in general, you'll see the um, double, not double angles, what am I dealing with? Codations or co-functions uh, given in this form. So that is in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to say, well, okay, that just changes to sine of 30 degrees. There's my theta, right? And there we go. Okay, so getting back to our question, let's see what we can do here now. Sine of minus a. Now that's another important thing, another important concept that you find over there. Sine of 90 minus, uh, sorry, sine of negative a. Now, one of the things I told you earlier is never work with negative angles. But if you check your toolkit, you've also got something called coterminal angles. So I can add 360 degrees to that. So I'm just going to work over here. And I'm going to say, well, sine of minus a, I can actually add 360 to that. That's something that I can do. It's something I'm permitted to do. So I'm going to say plus 360. Now, when I add 360 degrees, that allows me to say, well, that's actually sine of 360 degrees minus a. And that there is actually an identity for the reduction formula in the fourth quadrant. And to apply that, all I need to do is check. Is sine positive or negative? Well, sine in the fourth quadrant, as you can see over here, only causes positive. So that means that sine is negative. So it's minus sine and we use a. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to put up over there. It's equal to, this thing is equal to minus sine of a. Okay, minus, that's the minus that I'm taking from there. Now cos 90 minus a, when you see it, when you see it written out like that with your own eyes, you see it like that, cos 90 minus a, that's actually reduction formulae. So I'm going to say 90 minus a is the first quadrant, cos is positive, so I can leave the negative on the outside, and I can just say it's cos, sorry, not cos, but I'm going to change it to its co-ratio. Okay, so I'm going to put it in there, sine, and I'm going to take the A. That's co-ratios, right? Okay. Now, tan of 180 minus A. 180 minus, that's not a co-ratio, because co-ratios only look like the form of 270 minus, 270 plus, 90 minus, 90 plus. 
what, what 180 minus looks like is actually this. One eighty minus is over here, right? This is one eighty plus. This is three sixty minus, and this is theta, or in our case, I started using a. Okay, so tan one eighty minus tan in the second quadrant is negative, so that becomes negative tan of a. Multiplied by cos of one eighty minus one eighty minus a. So this whole thing is negative. So what I do with one minus one eighty minus a is I say let's add three sixty to that because three sixty adding three sixty doesn't change anything. So that's exactly what I'm going to do over there, and that's going to then become one eighty degrees because three hundred and sixty minus one eighty is one eighty minus a, and then I've got cos of one eighty minus a, and cos one eighty minus a is negative negative cos. A. Okay, are we done? Not quite. This year is just minus 2 sine A, and the bottom is going to be negative times negative. Um, sorry, that whole thing is negative, and negative times a negative gives me a positive. And then I've got here sine A using the quotient identity that we introduced in the first lesson of cos A multiplied by cos A. I've already multiplied out the negatives to give me that positive. And then I get the following. I get that cancels with that. And now I'm left with minus 2 sine A over sine A. And when that cancels, I get negative 2. And that's my solution for question number 2. See you in the next video.